Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, God. Our nation is blessed. We know because you have blessed her. And the people of our nation, Lord, you care for us so much. And you are causing the right thing to be done. Thank you, precious Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now listen, now I've, I've been sharing with you about praying for our nation. Now reading 1 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1. It says, Therefore I exalt first of all that supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Now, have you done that today already? Have you prayed for all men? Start with those in your sphere. Start with your colleagues at work. Start with your bosses at work. Start with your employees. If you're the boss, start with your employees. Start with your security man. Start with everyone, everyone. The, the person you're going to buy a bottle of drink from. The person you're going to send out to do something for you today. Oh, the driver that will pick your children from school. Start. And what are you praying about? That the influence of God's spirit will rest upon them. Let me tell you this. There is nothing God does without his spirit. Anything God wants to do, what he does is, you know, we read from the scripture that he sent his word. Now, when, when he, he sends his word, what happens? It is the influence of the Spirit of God that gives the word life. Now, <clears throat> God is concerned about those in authority. So concerned that he chooses them. And sometimes you want to look at your nation and say, ah, I like, I don't think God chose these leaders. <laughs> ah, no way. I don't think, I don't think God chose these leaders. You see, like I said on Monday, actually Jesus made this statement. He says, you err because you don't know the scriptures, nor the power of God. Now that word when he says the power of God actually means the, the, the logos of God. What does it mean, power of God? It means the character. You don't know the character of God. You, know, you don't know what God can do. So when he says you err because you don't know the character of God, you err because you don't know the scriptures, you don't know the power or the character or the personality or what God can do. So because you don't know how he thinks, you don't even know what to expect of him in a particular situation. See? <laughs> You know, <clears throat> there are people who will tell you, I don't think God chooses leaders. He has given us the, you know, sometimes even, even people like, I have, I've seen pastors even teach or say things like this, even when it comes to marriage. You say, ah, God doesn't give people wives or husband. He has given you a brain to think and to find he said, he that findeth a wife. Now, when, when, when people talk like that, it, it sort of makes sense to the flesh. Now, why do they talk like that? They talk like that because of their personal failures most times. Now, what do I mean personal failures? It, it's possible they have looked at life events before drawing to that conclusion. You, you understand what I'm saying? Now, if you're a pastor, you will hear a lot. And many times, if you don't censor your heart, the things, true counseling, you're, you're trying to counsel people, they will get you into walking in unbelief because you will look at certain situations and you cannot understand. And so... Over time, you begin to tell yourself, maybe this thing is not the way I think about it. Of course, there are lots of things that are not the way we think about it. That's why the Bible says we, we have to renew our minds. Yes, but then 
what, what should be the ingredient of the renewal of your mind? The wisdom of God. So when you face a new challenge you have not faced before, don't try to crack your head concerning it. Go before the Lord and ask Him, Lord, what's this all about? I have never thought about this. I have never seen this before. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will bring you understanding. He will teach you. He will teach you all things. That is one of the things He has the ability to teach you. And let me tell you this, the depth of His wisdom. Ah, Hmm. You know, I've, I've been in situations where I'm trying to understand certain things. And by the time the Holy Spirit opens it up to me, I'm like, whoa, how could I, how could I have connected this to this? But that's why he's God. And that's why he is wisdom. Praise God. So, so you, you find, you, there are people who... They wanted to get married. They heard the voice of God that this is your husband. This is your wife. And now they are married. Why did you get married? God spoke to me. I saw in a vision. I had a dream. I, and I had that dream three times. So it was a confirmation that it's from the Lord. Yes. But now we're having serious challenge. We're about to go through a divorce. Uh, so, so what happened? They got said, no, I, I, in fact, I can't even pray. You hear people talk, I can't even pray again. The challenge is too much. I can't even pray. Let's just end it. But I thought God spoke to you. When God spoke, did he say the marriage will have an expiry date? You know what's going on? You, you see, God spoke. Yes. But there was a purpose for that marriage. Oh, listen. Everything God speaks about, everything God does has a purpose. The fact that God has spoken to you doesn't mean challenges will not come. Oh, <laughs> you see, the reason God speaks to us is so that when the challenge comes, we will remember his word and stand true and wait for the fulfillment of his word. He, he doesn't give us the strength. We, he doesn't tell us to go and fulfill his word. No, he that has spoken will fulfill his word. So when God tells you this thing is of me and then you believe it, now the challenge of that thing comes. What am I supposed to do? That is when you remember that, hey, God told me this thing was of him. So two things that you should do. Number one, go before him and say, Lord, you know, you, you told me it's because of you that I got into this thing. It's because of you that I believed in this thing. The same thing with choosing leaders. When it's time for election, it's the same thing. We as God's children, we don't just say, ah, I like this kind of, I like the way this one spoke. I didn't like the way this one. We, we go before the Lord and say, Lord, what is your mind concerning our nation right now? And then the Lord will tell you. And let me tell you something. When he tells you, you are not the only one he is thinking about. He is not thinking about putting a president there that will call you and say, come and collect all the contracts because you prayed for it. No, sir. He's thinking of the good, the bad, and the ugly. He's thinking of the whole nation. And let me tell you this. If the nation is full of unrighteous people, there will really be no use putting a righteous man as the head and leader of that nation. His righteousness will be drowned in iniquity. He said, that's why the word of God commands us to pray for all men. For example, the youths went out and, and we began to proclaim, oh, end SARS, end SARS, end SARS. And then the government said, okay, no problem, we'll end SARS. And I know you've said it before, you've said it before. Now, as good as that was or is, listen to me now. We haven't sat down to first think about the fundamental issue. What made SARS to be the way they became? Was it a wrong thing for them to set up SARS in the first place? We all know it wasn't wrong. It's a special anti-robbery squad. So they were to deal with arm robbers. Were they dealing with arm robbers? Of course they've got some testimonies or results to share with you. But what made them 
brutal to the, to the even to innocent people. What, what made most of them turn around? It's just the same thing that happens everywhere, even in church. And what is it? You know, I was talking to the Lord and then the Lord said something to me. He said, son, if you don't fix the money issue, nothing will get fixed. Now, he said this thing to me concerning the church. And he said the same thing to me concerning the nation. If you don't fix the money issue, the whole challenge that people go through in life is money. Is money. Oh, you say SAS is harassing people. What about pastors harassing their brethren? Oh, you haven't seen? There are people who have been so harassed that they ran out of church and they tell you, I will never step my foot to any church again. Why? Man, they dealt with me. What do, you, what, what do you mean they dealt with me? They collected my car. In fact, they collected my house. You hear? And you're wondering, come on. Did they put gun at you? I mean, did they put a gun on your head? Ah, you, they say, <laughs> you don't understand. You know, some people be, ah, pastor, you don't understand. It's like that, that pastor put something in his mouth. <laughs> He said, I don't understand. I'll, but that's harassment. Now, what brought that church to that place of harassment? Now, we know there are lots of false churches. There are false prophets, false pastors, even false brethren everywhere. But there are still some good churches that have gone wrong. So what happened? What happened? Money happened. The same thing with the nation. It was a good nation. But something went wrong along the line. What went wrong along the line? Money. So you hear, you, you speak to this policeman. And they tell you their story. And they tell you how, look man. There is a way. I remember one time I, I went to buy um, new tires for my car. And so... I, oh, I was telling, I was trying to select the tire to buy. And then the guy said to me, that the seller, he said to me, he said, sir, I have these tires. They are actually brand new and branded. Uh, but uh, they've used them, so we sell them as second-hand tires. But they are actually brand, they, are not up to, they didn't use them for up to two weeks. So he brought he brought it, brought them out, and I looked at them. I'm like, oh, this is good. So I said, where where did you get it from? Because I want to be sure that they didn't steal them. I don't want to buy. I didn't want to buy a stolen tire or something like that. So I'm like, where did you get it from? Because these tires are really looking new. So where did you get it from? And I said, oh God, is uh, is from you know all these government drivers. I said, government drivers. How how? And then he told me this is what happens. They write in their requisition, they request for new tires. And that request, you see, they can request for a new tire today, and in the next two months, they request for another new tire. So he says, this is what they do. They, when they request for a new tires, they buy the new tires, take them for inspection. And after inspection, and it is confirmed that new tires have been seen and signed, they take out those new tires and put back the old tires. See? And then they go sell the new tires. When the next time they make a requisition again for new tires, they do the same thing. So they, they buy those tires at a certain amount, of course, when they come to sell it. And then I said to the guy, I said, and you buy from them? And then the guy so, so told me, I was trying to preach to the guy. And then he said, sir, truth is, if I don't buy, someone else will buy. <laughs> and I said, so why don't you report it or why don't you do something about it? Because if you stop buying, all of you here stop buying, they will stop selling. He said, sir, this thing goes all the way. You think it's the driver that is doing it, it goes all the way. The person in charge of transport, the director in charge, you know, it goes all the way. I was like, whoa. So you see, and I said, so what if a driver refused to do it? He said, it's not a problem. They will post you to where you will not see car to drive. And you will suffer for it. Now that's what I've created. You see, that's what I've driven lots of believers into iniquity. 
that we're talking about our nation now. And I'm trying to bring out certain things that we should begin to think about. Our time is up. Praise God. I'm continuing here tomorrow. Praise God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We will see change indeed in our nation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.